Proclaim Jesus TV gives you access to daily devotional anywhere, anytime. Visit our Facebook page every morning to be blessed by our inspiring daily devotional. Never see such. Uh, I can't not deny this. The love is shower on me is so much. So much, so much. Can someone explain this? explain this? You love me, you die for me even before I exist. So I can't resist all the least you. The least you. Your love for me is not to trust you. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for today. We bless you because you're a faithful God who specializes in doing faithful things. Thank you, Father, for today. Open the ears of your people to hear. Open their eyes to see and their hearts to understand. And let your blessing be available for everybody who will listen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. I want to welcome you today to another time with the Lord. I'll be speaking on simple steps. Simple steps for building a continuous, successful enterprise. Simple steps for building a continuous, successful enterprise enterprise and today i'd like us to look at the word of god as we consider matthew chapter 25 i'll read verses 14 to 20 matthew 25 verses 14 to 20 for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods and unto one he gave five talents to another two to another two and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straight away he took his journey. Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same, and made other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. And he that had received one went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth unto them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, 
Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Praise God. The scriptures I've just read to us from Matthew chapter 25 from verses 14 to 20 is a wonderful explanation of the story of the talents. Three persons were given talents, different kinds of talents. One was given five, the other was given two, and the last was given one. Now, I like to call our attention to very serious issues that, that reminds us that we are not all the same. The master of the house did not give them equal talents. He gave them different talents because every man is different. As our fingers are not equal, so are our abilities. There is no single person anywhere who has the same ability, the same strength, the same comfort like the other man. And that reminds me and that makes me know that everybody must act according to the ability that God has given to him. And that, and that takes us to the very first step that everybody must know, which is the building block that I call ability. Ability. We are not all the same. We are not all the same. What you can do, the other may not be able to do. What I can do, another may not be able to do. So everybody has different abilities. If you know your ability resides on driving, go ahead and drive. Drive with passion drive with purpose drive with everything inside of you that is your ability make sure that you utilize your strength what kills most men is because they spend time majoring on their weakness no you don't need to major your weakness major on your strength minimize your errors and zero in on those things that are your abilities and that was what the master did he gave them based on their different abilities and can i warn you the master, when he came, was not looking for different things other than what he has invested on them. You don't look at your neighbor. Do not consider your co compare yourself with your neighbor. Do not look at what your neighbor is doing. Do not do not write yourself off because of what somebody else is doing. He is in his own field. Let him operate in his own field, and you operate in your own field. I normally tell a few of my friends, and I like to tell you that I am not in competition with anybody. There is nobody upon the face of the earth that I'm in competition with. Rather, I am in competition with my own set goals. I don't compete with any man, but I compete with my own set goals. So know your ability, use your ability, work on your strengths, and make sure you make the best out of the ability you have gotten. If you know that you are good in running, make, best, make the best of it. Do not minimize it. Do not play down on it. Utilize it and become the best. Out of it the second thing i like to call your attention to is the is the issue of boldness 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 you know what the master said he said he gave, he gave the first five he gave the other two he gave the other one and he said go and tribute it it, it requires a bold step for the one who was giving two to look at the one that was giving five and still be able to walk without being affected by the one that was giving more or the one that was giving less. He told himself, I must walk. I must go and trade. I must go and do something wonderful. I must go and do something excellent. I must go and invest. I must go and expand my coast. Be bold. Be bold. One people have said that investment on its own is a risk. Investment is a risk. Any man who does not want to take a risk cannot invest. So be bold to take the risk. Be bold to take the step. Be bold to take a step. Be bold to move. You don't, like I, 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 I usually say, you don't sit down and cry. You stand up and try. So make sure that everything that resides on the inside of you is crying out for expression. So be bold to do it. Any man who says, I cannot swim, I cannot swim, will not be able to swim. Can I tell you something that happened to a young man? A young man was taken to the bank of a river, river by an old man. And the old man told him, he said, young man, can you swim? The young man looked at the old man and said, old, old man, I can't swim. He said, no, you can swim. He said, sir, I cannot swim. He said, you can't swim. He said, I cannot swim. And the you, old man told the young man that inside this river are crocodiles. There are crocodiles. And if you get into this river, the crocodiles may eat you up. The young man looked at the old man and smiled. He said, sir, 
I need I don't need you to tell me about the crocodiles because I don't swim, so I will not do I don't I don't need to find myself inside the river. So, sir, I don't have any business with the crocodiles. But just as the young man was ending the statement, the old man pushed the young man into the river. Suddenly, under a under a matter of few seconds, the young man had swam to the other side of the river. You know why? In his mind, there are crocodiles. In his mind, I will die. And the survival instinct inside of him came alive and he swam to the other side. By the time he got there, the old man cried out to him, How did you swim to the other side? He said, Sir, there are crocodiles inside the river. I cannot die. He said, Oh, young man, there are no crocodiles. I just told, said that to you so that you can get enough strength inside of you to swim through. Every man can be bold if you choose to be bold. You can take the bull by the horn if you choose to. You can say yes if you are strong to. If you can, you can say no if you wish to. So take the bull by the horn. And the two of them, the one with five and the one with two, set out to walk. But the one that was given one was so timid and he refused to walk. Be bold today. Take that business by that's by storm. Go out and walk. Go out and make investments. Go and go out and let the world know what you have inside of you. And let the world know that you can become a better person. The third aspect, which I saw, is what I call commitment. Commitment. The Bible says, and he went on a journey. He went on a journey. He left immediately. He gave them. That is commitment. You don't give a man a goat and hold on to the rope. When you give a man an assignment, you give him the power to act. And that I saw in this scripture. After he gave them their talent, he allowed them to walk. He gave them the expression to express themselves. He gave them the strength to go ahead and show that they can do it. Now you must be committed. A man who is not committed to his vision will not succeed in his adventure. A man who is not committed to what he believes will not succeed in whatsoever he sets his heart out to do. Be committed. Be committed. Don't only walk when you are being monitored. A man who only walks when he's monitored will not go far. Because the day there will be nobody to monitor him, he will make a shipwreck of the assignment. And that I saw in the life of the young man who healed his, who hid his talent. Because the master was not at home to monitor him, he hid his talent. But the other two, with the master, around or not around, they set out to walk. Be committed. Not only when you are monitored. Truancy may set in, but do not pay attention to truancy. Be committed to what you are set to. To achieve be committed fight for it be dedicated to it and make sure you make the best out of whatsoever you have been told to do and number four and the final point i like to share with you is that for anybody who wants to build a very strong a, a block towards ensuring a continuous successful entrepreneurship the person must do what i call decision decision a man is a product of the decisions he make in life the decisions you make will either make you or mar you. The decisions you make today will break you or make you. They decided to walk. The other young man decided to hide his talent. You can decide today to sit down and cry and say nobody is helping me. Jesus told the young man, he said, do you want to be made whole? He said, I don't have anybody. No, that was not the question. That was not the answer to the question. Do you want to be made whole? You don't need to cry about your problem. Sometimes we cry so much that we don't have enough strength to do something. The Bible said that this young man went to trade. The other one decided to hide this. The decision is yours. Will you decide today to hide your talents and lose your destiny? Or will you decide to trade with every God-given ability that God has given to you and make the best out of life? You are a product of the decision you make or refuse to make. Success is a decision either because of your location, your condition, or your situation. Decide today to be successful. I want to call you to make a decision to join God where God is at work and to become the best God ever desires you to be. Shall we pray together? Our Father and our God, we thank you for your children who are listening to me. I pray that, Father, you will bless them and keep them and your name will be glorified. I pray that, Father, you will sustain them from the days of adversity and perfect all that concerns them. I pray that your children will experience and enjoy great building blocks that will give them continuous success in their entrepreneurial activities. 
Thank you, Father. To you be the glory. To you be the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to invite you to church. Cornerstone Baptist Church. We meet every Sunday, 8 a.m. Please come worship with us. A place where Jesus celebrates men in the open. If you come, you will not regret you did. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. tell you something you already know the world ain't all sunshine and rainbows it's a very mean and nasty place and I don't care how tough you are it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it you me or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life but it ain't about how hard you hit it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward how much you can take and keep moving forward that's how winning is done Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside, and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. The margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you you can't. something, go get it. Period. Don't be afraid to fail. You can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. You have to believe that something different can happen. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. That most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Deep down, dig deep down, ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy, no matter how crazy it may sound to the people. Make a choice, like you just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. Why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? See why, why, why can't I do that? What did you say to the kid? It ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Get up. Get up. Get up. And don't ever give up. We can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. 
Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. I don't do well in math. You're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. If you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. Don't cry to give up. Cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain. You already hurt. Get a reward from it. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not point the finger saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Because every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. So now you got to go out and show them that I'm a different creature. Now. I'm going to show you how great I am. The 17th chapter of St. Lucas is written, The kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Now, what are you going to do? Because limits, like fears, are often just an illusion.
make a war. My name is Reverend J. Fatui, Pastor of Victory Baptist Church, Barua. I am taking my text from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. For the preaching of Christ is to them that perish foolishness, but unto which are saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? As not God has made foolish the wisdom of this world. For after that in the wisdom of God, that the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jew require a sign, and the Greek seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jew a stumbling block, and unto the Greek foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The last verse, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. As I tie through this devotion, believers and the cross, it is very important for us to know that this day we have people had misconception of what cross is. But in a nutshell, cross symbolizes place of suffering where Christ carried our body. Even in the Roman world, it is a place where those that commit one offense or the other are being punished for what they have done. So it is a place where Christ suffered for us. It is a place where Christ was punished. It is a place where Christ carried the burden of our sin. But the question before us this afternoon is for us to consider the benefit believers can derive from the cross. And that is why I'm titling this devotion, Believers and the Cross. In the first place, the believer has a lot of things to derive from the cross because of the benefit that Christ has brought for us as a result of the resurrection that follow the suffering of Christ on the cross of Calvary. The event that happened on the cross gives room for the following things. In the first place, it paved way for empowerment. It paves way for empowerment. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 to 7. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 to 7. And the Bible says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, You have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, we thought at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel. Then verse 7 says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father has put in his own power. That is the first benefit we derive from cross as believer. We derive empowerment because it was the resurrection of Jesus Christ after his suffering on the cross that paved way for divine empowerment. In the second place, it helps believer to live a justified life in Christ. It helps believers to live a justified life in Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Read this way. 
this therefore no no condemnation to them who which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit this suggests to us that anyone that is in christ has no condemnation anyone who is in christ is justified anyone who is in christ is being free from guilt of sin is being delivered from power of sin and that is one of the benefits we derive from the cross and that should be a very good response from christian today to appreciate what christ has done for us on the cross of calvary as we are still considering believer and the cross we must always have it at the back of our mind that the spirit of god that is in us helps us to live above condemnation helps us to live above condemnation in the third place as we consider believers and the cross it helps us not to abuse the grace of god over our lives and that is taken from galatians chapter 2 galatians chapter 2 verse 20 to 21 galatians chapter 2 verse 20 to 21 i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i live but christ lived in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who gave me who loved me and gave me himself for me and that's exactly what christ did for us. verse 21 says i do not frustrate the grace of god for if righteousness come by law then christ is dead in vain what did we discover in our contemporary society today is that people have misconception about what is called the grace of god we misconceive the grace of god we have misconception about the grace of God. But what the Lord is saying, according to Paul, as he reveals to us from Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, that it helps us not to abuse the grace of God over our lives. Then we always have this at the back of our mind. No wonder he justifies his point again in Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 to 2 What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may have earned? Verse 2 says God forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer dear him? That suggests to us that Christians must not abuse the grace of God over their lives. Christians must not abuse the grace of God over their lives. We need to get to a position whereby we don't misuse the grace the Lord has given to us. It is true that the Lord has forgiven us our sin. It is true that the Lord has removed our sin. It is true that a true Christian cannot be dominated by sin, but we must have a caution at the back of our mind so that we not misuse the grace of God over our lives. So, my audience today, what the Lord is saying, as we are considering the cross, as the Easter period is moving closer to us, believers must know the benefit they can derive from the cross. Just to remind you again, the believers must know that one of the benefits that we derive as believers from the cross is that it helps us to enjoy divine empowerment because christ promised the disciples that power will come over them and he had them to remain or, or to remain in a particular place for the endowment of the power of god in the second place we must also have it at the back of our mind that it helps us to live a justified life it helps us to live a justified life in the third place it also helps us not to abuse the grace of god over our lives and i pray today as you consider this message for you to enjoy the benefits that the lord has brought to us true is dead on the cross i pray that 
God will give you much grace to put your trust in Him and surrender the totality of your life to Jesus. When you do, your life will be delivered from sin and you will live a justified life and you will keep on enjoying the blessings of the kingdom. I want to specially invite you to our forthcoming program on the 13th of March in, 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 in where we'll be having our praise and prayer night. You are highly welcome and I strongly believe that you will be richly blessed. Let us pray. Father, I pray this day as your people consider this message and you respond to the word of the Lord and the benefits that come to us through the grace that flow from the cross. I pray that you will bless your people and they will be enriched with kingdom blessing. Amen.
good day, beloved. Those of you who are watching me at home, I connect you to the covenant of our Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection. He spoke to the disciples and he said in Matthew 28 verse 18, All authority, all powers in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, yes, I am with you even to the end of the age. The issue of kingdom authority is a factor. As kingdom people for kingdom project, we have this Monday to emphasize kingdom issues. And I'm calling you to join me in the covenant of this kingdom authority that has been bestowed upon our Lord Jesus Christ. This authority is subsumed first, the authority of his name. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 through to 11, is it because Jesus Christ has humbled himself? God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things on earth, underneath the heart and even in heaven. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I want you to join me in the covenant of this kingdom authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, there is also the kingdom authority given through the word of God. The word of God is yea and amen. A centurion in Matthew chapter 8 met Jesus Christ and told him, You don't need to come to my house to heal my word. The one that is sick in my family. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 8. The centurion is a man of authority and who understood authority through Jesus Christ. Say a word. Speak a word. That centurion was connecting himself to the covenant in Psalm 107 verse 18, 19 and 20. He said, Oh, that man should praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful love to the children of men. For I has broken the gate of brass and caught the bars of iron and sunder. He said he sent his word to them and his word healed them. Because that word has authority. Connect to the authority of the name. Connect to the authority of the word. That word can heal. That word can set at liberty. Number three, the kingdom of authority of God is rooted in the blood of Jesus Christ. John the Apostle in the highland of Patmos received this revelation that those who uphold the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ will be overcomers. Hence John told us in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. There is power mighty in the blood. The blood that speaketh better things than the blood of a man. That blood heals. That blood sets us liberty. That blood works miracle. That blood saves. I call you to connect to the kingdom authority. Kingdom authority. We are kingdom people for kingdom project. And we must operate under the unction the anointing, the grace of kingdom authority. I've shared three realms with you. I do hope you will connect with me in prayer that you will know the source of the kingdom. The source is God. The name of Jesus has authority. The word of God has authority. The blood of Christ has authority. The scriptural injunction is these authority have also been bestowed to believers. And I want you to enjoy this authority because this authority has been given to us that we should go out that these signs I follow us those who believe in the word and the name of Jesus and those who uphold the authority say if you believe 
you will see the glory of God. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. God, you are Lord. That individual at home who is sick, in pain, the Bible says you send your word and the word heal. I pronounce healing in the name of Jesus Christ. That individual who, oh God, has been laid off from work. You will make a way in the name of Jesus Christ. That individual in, oh God, a sorrow of one time or the other. We pray, oh God, there will be solution to that situation. Is there one, oh God, who has been expecting a miracle, a helping hand? Lord, you will send a helper to that individual. Today, your authority will manifest in their life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. I will, I will justify,
Jehovah Rapha, you heal my pain, Jehovah Shammah. 